what we're looking to do is to meet that last need, to save that last group of dogs who are still dying because they are not the resources. There's not yet a group who's able to support dogs who have really, really resource intensive needs or different environmental needs to make it out of the shelter. I think there's a misconception that the dogs that are still dying there are, you know, these scary, aggressive, unadoptable dogs, and that's not the case at all. They're wonderful dogs, and maybe it's just that they handle the, sh the stress of the shelter differently than other dogs. They just can't quite make it in that environment. Maybe it's that the issues they have take more resources than a high volume adoption program has to dedicate, but it doesn't mean that they're not good adoptable dogs and we get to see these dogs in homes now and it's proof positive to see them thriving, to see them living as happy four-legged members of this community. They just needed something different to help them get to that place. Dogs Out Loud provides weekly classes um, for, uh, we have a mix of dogs who come to classes. Uh, some of them are dogs who are living in the shelter, some of them are shelter dogs who are in foster, and some of them are actually recently adopted dogs. A lot of our activities are geared towards getting the dogs calmed down, uh, getting them focused on their handlers so that they can do things in, uh, like you know, walk nicely on a leash and be able to walk through a, a crowd of, of people or be able to walk past dogs at a certain distance or, or whatever and maintain focus and self-control. We go to the shelter and we do some work in kennel with dogs um, because we really feel like it's important to work with dogs in the space where they live. Um, and then we also do a lot of work out of the kennel. We do group hikes. We kind of intermix those with our classes, but we feel like those are really important because the dogs are all working towards the same goal or, you know, we're walking together. And when dogs walk together, that really, uh, really kind of solidifies the training that we then do in class. We take dogs out for walks around the shelter or around the town lake trail. We go on field trips to to different parks, our houses, uh, to pet friendly stores, and we work on specific behaviors, how to have self-control in, in public. And so by doing all those things with dogs who are living in shelters, we can kind of make their life while they're there a little less frustrating, a little less, uh, we can kind of get some of that energy out and help people see the great dog that they're gonna be in their homes. Spears and I foster Cupcake. She is a Dogs Out Loud dog. So when I first got her, I couldn't even take her out on a walk. I couldn't take her even really outside of my house unless it was those odd off hours where you know no one's walking their dog. Um, and even that, we had to take multiple detours around the neighborhood to make sure that we avoided any kind of animal ever. And even when she was at the shelter, I know she had a lot of issues with other dogs, just having inter you know, negative interactions with them, getting into fights, things like that. Between bat training and um, hikes and just specific just training sessions that she's been going through. So, you know, parallel walking with other dogs, or she now is a dog that can be in small groups and she can go on hikes and um, she's not a complete disaster. It's definitely been an eye opener of what you consider a good dog and what you consider a bad dog. Like most people, I think, would look at Cupcake and see her as a bad dog initially off the bat. You think, oh, she can't be around other dogs. Um, but I've seen where she started and where she's gotten to, and I've seen where she can get to. Um, and just seeing a dog like that go from that point to now where she is a manageable dog, like. It's, it's incredible and I see that training programs like this actually do work and because of that, like I can't imagine giving up this little dog. We provide, you know, not just the bridge to the home, not just the support to make that dog adoptable, but also the support once they get adopted to help them go on and actually thrive in that home and stay in that home. Hi, my name is Kyle. I adopted Kazoo, who is a awesome two-year-old dog that um, Dogs Out Loud was working with in Austin Animal Shelter. 
We were fortunate enough to find out that he came with the whole entourage of support. Uh, we also received an adoption packet, which came with a whole uh, guide of different types of dog behaviors and what to look for, and also just some um, helpful information on bringing a new dog into your house, um, as well as all the contact information for Dogs Out Loud and um, how to come to some of the training sessions and about the at-home visits. Um, as well as a little behavior profile of Zhu himself. So we came to the first post-adoption class today, which focused on a lot of relaxation and leash handling techniques and was very helpful and Zhu did very well and it was super, it was super happy for me to see how happy he was to see everyone that they had been working with at Dogs Out Loud. Um, he was very excited to see everyone and he knew everyone. I am Gail Hodges and this is my husband Kip Hodges and we adopted Tigger Bean from Austin Pets Alive. I saw a couple other dogs as well that I liked and they all ended up being through Dogs Out Loud. Once I decided that I was going to go for this, you know, for Jenny, I contacted Dawn and she called me and she asked me a lot of really important questions and made sure that she was going to be a good fit for our family, making sure that there weren't small children and the cats and she let us know about the other dogs and, you know, the the issues that that she has and how she's special and you know she needs she needs to be by herself in a home with a family that uh, isn't going to get her all riled up all the time and so we went to her house a couple of times and then we actually met them at a park and went for a walk with other dogs so that she could teach us how to work with with the uh, tigger when she saw a squirrel or saw another dog and how she postures and she taught us all that stuff so we weren't taken by surprise by anything she wanted to make sure we understood everything that all of the little special idiosyncrasies that come with her. Then they even came over and brought dogs that they had themselves and would go on walks. You know, Kip would walk Tigger and Dom would walk along with him and then they would walk those other dogs that Tigger was familiar with along the way to kind of get her used to walking with other dogs. So they're supporting us in that way to help her you know, acclimate to her environment and to help teach you know, Kip how to handle the situations as they come along. When she first got here, she was pretty rambunctious, um, pretty excited about trying to see and do everything. She was, um, I'll say, challenged by the dogs next door. Um, but over time, she's calmed down significantly and we can take her outside in the backyard now without a leash. She needs no um, encouragement to stay away from the fence and the dogs next door, even though they may be barking at the fence. Um, and she loves people. She just loves to greet everybody at the back gate or the front door. Yeah, girl! So what we're hoping to do is we never want to be a high volume adoption shelter. Even when we do have that building, we really are trying to stay essentially the opposite of that. We want to create a home away from home. We're going to have very limited, even once we grow up to full, full capacity, um, number of dogs on the premises so we can still create that very low stress, very nurturing environment and very good dog to caregiver ratio so they're getting the support they need and the individual attention that they need to get on the road home. We started this program because we're very aware of the limited availability of foster homes for this subset of dogs. In particular, if it's a dog who at this point in time is not able to go to a foster home with other pets, there's you know very, very slim chance that we're going to be able to find a foster who can offer both the right environment and carry out a training plan to get that dog where they need to be to get adopted. So without a facility, we are still limited in the number of dogs that we're, we're able to help and get like physically out of the shelter environment.